Hey everyone, in this episode we will explore how we can simplify our hot chocolate configuration code by using the type auto registration feature that we have introduced with hot chocolate 12.8. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you like our content. And with that, let's dive into some code. Okay, let me go over to our next screen. In this demo project, I've put a couple of things in that you would find in typical GraphQL servers. Like we have data loaders, uh, we have a couple of types here, and for each type topic or for each topic of our service, we have a kind of a folder here. And you can see that we have split our mutation types and our uh, query types into these topics. So let's have a look at our configuration code. And uh, typically what you would see is something like this, where we have this long chain uh, of configuration instructions in hot chocolate. Um, this at GraphQL server actually returns us a GraphQL builder where we then can chain in these configuration uh, settings like add query type or add type extensions and so on. And uh, we can see that there are a lot of things here, like these type extensions as I already said, then we can see uh, some types for our um, filter system. Um, then we can see here the data loaders that we are using in our project and so on. So with Hot Chocolate 12.8, we introduced a new source generator that, that will help with auto-registering uh, GraphQL types and data loaders and things like that. And this, is, uh, this has not the typical downsides that you usually have with uh, assembly scanning or other um, approaches to auto-register types, since we are do doing it at uh, build time. That means if there is something wrong with your types, you will already see at build time with compile errors. In order to use this new source generator, we need to head over to our project file and add the source generator package. Um, the package is called Hot Chocolate Types Analyzer. And as I said, it's available in version 12.8 onwards. Uh, we are using here the newest uh, version 13 preview. Since it's a source generator, we can add it as a private asset to our project. Okay, I'm just saving that. Let's uh, rebuild and restore our project and head back to our program CS. So just by putting this analyzer in, we already have the auto registration generated. We just need to chain in the add demo types here and you can see how quickly it actually generated. I just put the package in. We already have this type extension here. Um, and we can go in and we can see that the source generator actually analyzed our project and found all the GraphQL, uh, GraphQL related types here. Like we have the data loaders, we have type extensions, and we have the actual GraphQL types. Okay, and with that, I actually can get, get rid of a lot of other type registrations here. I can remove uh, the type extensions. Uh, I can remove these type extensions, the types, um, the upload type we actually have to keep in here because it's a hot chocolate type and it and essentially tells our system that you want to use upload uh, like the upload protocol in GraphQL. But all the user related types we can actually get rid of. There's still some configuration entries that we want to keep, like add global object identification. This is a specification we want to use in our schema. So it's a user decision to opt in here. Uh, also, that we want to use uh, mutation conventions is something we will have to keep in here and uh, tell the GraphQL schema. Just the thing that we produce, like types or types ex uh, type extensions, um, they are automatically found and registered. 
And just to show you how easily that is done and how quickly types are registered, let's create a new uh, query type just in our root level here. So let's create a new file, uh, foo query maybe, .cs, and then we put in the foo query code. You can see it's annotated in this uh, ex in this instance. We see extend object type here, and we're extending the query type. And if we now go to our um, generated type module here, we can step in and we can see at the bottom it's already uh, registered. So as you type, the source generator will actually add the types that you are creating to this type module. By default, we will use the um, project name for the um, name of the type module here. So in this instance, it's called demo types. But you can also change that. Like if I um, essentially want a different name, like maybe asset types, I can put in an attribute telling me what name um, the source generator should pick. Uh, I usually put that in a file that I call module info. And there we just put in the annotation as I said, and let's call it asset types. And then we go back to our program CS here and we already can see that this module is no longer valid because it's actually now at asset types. Okay, that's awesome. We also could add some options into our module that we only want to register types or we only want to register um, maybe the data loader. So you can tell the source generator what kinds of uh, things you want to actually auto register. Okay, since we are operating on an assembly basis, let's head to a different project where we use multiple assemblies. So this essentially is the same project than we used before. So we have the server here. Um, as we look at our configuration code, we actually can see that it's the same server than as before. We have the um, add assets types that we just introduced, but we also can see there are a couple of new types here, like the asset price change type and so on. And these are actually additional types that come from a different project, uh, server.prices in this instance. And with the source generator, we actually can generate a type module on a per um, project basis. So we can go in the project file of our new project here and just add the analyzer again. And just by doing that, we actually can go back to our server configuration here and probably we didn't specify a module name, but since the um, project name is something with prices, we get to add prices types here. And if we look into that, we can see that we auto registered uh, or we generated a module with the types of our price project down here. So now we can get rid of the additional type registrations here. And what this opens up is, if I decide to organize my project a bit different by moving maybe these topic related types into separate projects, I still get a nice configuration uh, with auto-generated modules per each project. And in this, in this instance, the add prices types module is actually nicely named. But uh, again, uh, if I want a custom name, I always can introduce my module specification like we did before and rename it. With this, we are at the end. I hope you enjoyed the content. And uh, please, if you like our project, help us by starring us on GitHub. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and I hope to see you next. Goodbye.